Ciento. From stunning Tombstone Pass in Calgary, Alberta, welcome, welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. From Porto in Portugal, welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, we play band or not band with the latest crop of triathlon superbikes, plus there is more in our new tenuous cycling celebrity segment. Yeah, find out how we managed to shoehorn Kim Kardashian West into the show a little bit later on. We've also got a bulging cycling shorts, more tech, and a pro cycling hack, and lots, lots more. First up, now, we didn't weirdly reference it in our intro, but it is World Championships Week. So make sure you check out our preview of the Worlds to swat up. Yeah. Now, as we film this, we just have two results to tell you. Mm. And that is the men's and the women's team time trial from Sunday. But what races they were. Fantastic. First of all, Matt, a little cheeky fist bump. Yep. We nailed our predictions once again because Bolst Dolmans actually dominated the women's event. They put 48 seconds into second place Canyon SRAM and near two minutes into third place Savelle Bigler. Some super fast times as we predicted as well. Over in the men's event, it was Etix Quickstep who won for the third time, regaining the title. And unsurprisingly, it was BMC who are in second place at only 11 seconds. And a great ride by Orica Bike Exchange who got the bronze medal at 37 seconds too. But it wasn't so much the pace and the tempo, it was the heat mm. that really saw a lot of people getting into problems, especially in the women's race where there was a few that didn't actually manage to finish because of heat stroke. Yeah, it was like 40 degrees. It, it was, it's extremely hot. Actually, now I tell you what, Matt, BMC are going to be extra gutted at missing out because they literally just announced their big new co-sponsor, luxury watch brand Tag Here, just before the event. I'm sure they thought that that announcement would have been really well timed, <laughs> but it wasn't. Tumbleweed effects. Meanwhile though, over in France, it was the final big race or the final road race of the European road season, the classic Paris Tour, where all of the sprinters were honing their form, which leads us nicely in to Wattage Bazooka! Quick. Oh! The professional Wattage Bazooka this week goes to... Fernando Gaviria oh. of Colombia. Well, it's a quick step for a, can I say, a quite stupendous victory, a brave victory, a victory with so much panache, I nearly wept. <laughs> but basically what he did, the bunch came around the final corner with about 800 metres to go, looked like it was going to be set fair for a bunch sprint. Then Gaviria emerged from the pack on his own and started his sprint with about 750 metres to go, distanced the rest of the bunch, then with about 500 metres to go, sat down having opened a gap of about 25 metres and held them all the way to the line. Absolutely amazing. That is almost literally, if you were to describe a what is bazooka someone, you could now just say Fernando Gaviria. He did a Gaviria. Harry Tour. Yeah. yeah. What an incredible push. Is it fair to say he almost led himself out? He did lead himself out. Yeah, absolutely amazing. But not even a flick of the elbow, though. He just kind of, it was innate. Yeah. Do you know what I think? I think he might have been liberated by the fact that he wasn't mentioned in our GCM World Championship preview show. It was almost like he had a point to prove. There was no kind of like weight of expectation. There was no kind of curse hanging over his shoulders. And that is the result. He did look pretty pleased. And he did say he'd love to end the season in the Rainbow Bands. Right then, GCN viewer Wattage Bazooka this week is very well deserved. It goes to Michael Krukov mm -hmm. because he has taken what is supposedly the world's most competitive Strava segment. It's called Full Sawyer's Uphill. It's in Richmond Park uh, in London. Oh well. And 71,000 people that is a have, bit have registered times on that. And he is now the KOM. But what is even more impressive is that the Olympics road race went up that hill. Plus, every year we have the Pro uh, Ride London Surrey Classic. Well done, to give it its full name. Yeah, thank you very much. So that is an exceedingly well-deserved Watchers Bazooka. But, interestingly, 71,000 people have done it, but Matt, neither you or I No, we it. were looking through the list and we haven't registered a Strava time, so that could change at some point in the not too distant Watch out, future. Michael, GCN is coming to get your care Perhaps. Or we'll have a stab at it. Yeah. And then we'll finish an honourable and then delete it from Strava. 450, yeah. 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 <laughs> you ready? I am indeed. It's time now for caption of the week. First of all, results from last week's show. We had this cracking photo of Fabian Cancellara taking a selfie with Greg Van Avermaet, two Olympic champions, no less. 
And the winner is Mr. Bun75, who said, Keep watching, mate. He tries to jump a log in a minute. It's hilarious. Yeah. I think we all it's know what I'm actually laughing about. at that. That's actually pretty good, yeah, Mr. Bun75. Like, yeah, congratulations, because you win a GCN Camelback water bottle. Not one that's stuck in the Pacific Ocean, but no. one that's actually here now that we can send out to you. So, well, well done. done. Well, well, this week's photo is this from the World Championships, the Team Time Trial, of course. It is BMC in full flight, but a sort of odd formation going on. You've, have you been thinking about a particular uh, caption site? Far away. <clears throat> Seriously, mate, if you get on my wheel, you'll save 30%. No, nah, that's right. I'm, I'm on a pretty good day. I'm just going to do my own thing. If you can do better than that, which I've no doubt you can, you know what to do. That was, that was a flat as a packet, wasn't it? That? It's been a really big week in the world of bike tech, but for triathletes, not roadies. Yeah, the World Ironman Championships took place last weekend. And just as we roadies might expect from our biggest event of the year, the Tour de France, so too have a load of triathlon brands and bike brands launched new products out at Kona. The weird thing for us though, is that a lot of these bikes can't be raced on the road because they're not UCI legal. So we thought, Matt, play a little game. Let's do it. Banned or not banned? It's time for banned or not banned. First up, man, we've got this, the new... Psycho, sorry, sorry to interrupt me. What on earth has happened to your voice? That was, that was my, especially my game show voice, but we'll just move that to one side, show. First up, this. Look at that, the new Cervelo P5X. What do you reckon, banned, Matt, or not banned? Banned. Banned, correct. That contravenes at least three UCI rules. First of all, it's a beam design, so it dispenses with the UCI's double diamond stipulation. Also, those cross sections, they're likely to well exceed the three to one ratio, which remember, is currently still in place. Mm. It hasn't been abolished yet. And then finally, We've got discs which are thoroughly banned, but despite those, Cervelo say it's actually even quicker than their P5, which was supposed to be one of the fastest bikes of all time. On it costs $15,000. $15,000? 15, yeah, yeah. Before we leave it though, Matt, what do you think, hot or not? It looks like a villain, a super villain. I'm gonna say not. You see, I think it's hot. I think it looks like a superhero's bike, but a superhero with a dark side, like Batman. Right, next up, what about this one then? The BMC Whoa. Time Machine. Banned. Well, it's kind of semi-banned. Semi-banned? Yes. Let, let me elaborate. Now, as this bike is set up, it's actually set up for triathletes, okay? Because you've got these removable storage boxes that act as, as obviously fairings. Then you've got the seat pin that's actually pushing the rider quite a way forward, as you'd expect for triathlons, above the five centimeter rule as set by the UCI. So it's doubly banned in effect. But if you remove the uh, bento storage boxes, and you change the seat position, what you have is the 2017 BMC TT rig. Yeah. Okay, now it's claimed to be their fastest machine ever, although we haven't got a price on it just yet. No, do you know what? That is really innovative. It actually reminds me of last year's uh, launch from Canyon, which is their Speedmax, and that shares similar things. It's got removable storage boxes, and we saw it used to great effect by Jan Frodeno in the Ironman World Championships, and also by riders like Nara Quintana to win the Vuelta. Right, okay, Matt, next up. How about the Tri-Rig Omni? Banned or not banned? Ooh, ooh, banned. Yeah. Well and truly banned, the UCI wouldn't even touch that with a barge pole. It takes its inspiration from the now 24-year-old Lotus bike that was used by Chris Borman in Barcelona. It shares the same uh, monoblade design, but this one actually has two chainstays and two fork blades, as opposed to the genuine mono design. It's fast, and one of the main reasons for that is because of the lack of trailing edges between the front and the back wheels. What do you think, hot or not? Well, I actually quite like it. Yeah? It looks very similar to Chris Balls, but as you already mentioned, but take away the orange, replace it with red logos, it'd be almost perfect. Although, they just need to put the saddle on the right way around, to be honest mm. with you. So I'm back to front. Yeah, that does it for me, a little bit. How about this then, Si? Next up, we have the Diamondback and Dian. I know so it's banned. not a motorbike, it's not, but you are right, it is banned. I mean, first off, discs, totally banned. Look at those cross sections, absolutely banned. It does look a little bit like the Cervelo. Mm, now, I can't bit. remember 
in relation to what we thought about it, I remember I wasn't in the news show, but I'll give you my view. I think it's wonderful. Really? Now, jury's still out on for me for that one, but I do like the fact that there is an awful lot of places there to store your jam sandwiches, and we know that iron people like to store stuff, don't they? Certainly we? do, don't they? Okay, right, next up, Matt, the Cube C68. Banned or not banned? I mean, look at that bottom bracket, so straight away for me, banned. Yeah, but it'd be interesting to see if the UCI does relax their three to one rule, whether or not that bottom bracket area would get passed. The one thing that I might think, I think that might trip it up is the dropped seat stays there, mm. because that definitely isn't UCI legal, I don't think. I do like the fact though, that if you're going through a particularly deep puddle, you can pick your feet off the pedals and just put them on a little rest there. Yeah, it's and a there's nice a nice touch. There's a handle on your head tube. Don't know what that's for. Hot or not, Matt? It's hot. Really? I like it. Definitely. Weirdly, it looks stealthy, it looks fast, and I can see a top kind of um, pro rider on it as well. It just kind of looks right. No, definitely not for me. Sorry. Controversial. Sorry. Well, finally, we have this. This is a spy shot, actually, from Tri-Rig of the new Cannondale Slice. Now, obviously, it's banned because it's got discs, but apart from that, it looks relatively traditional, and I do like that zesty green colour as well. Yeah. All right then, Matt, the question then. Would you actually like to see any of these bikes in UCI World Tour races? Do you want to see Tom DeMoula on a bike that looks a little bit like a motorbike? Not on a motorbike. There's a couple of designs there that I'd happily see one of the top pros on. But I think, yeah, I'm all for innovation and the advancement of design but there has to be limits. And there's a few bikes there that are way too far out for me, but a few that are just spot on as well. Yeah, I think you're right, because if there were no limits, then everyone would end up riding on recumbents. Ah! Question is, for you lot, what would you like to ban or not to ban? That is this week's question. Let us know in the comments. Veritably. Tech of the week this week, and it comes from indoor training experts, Kinomap. They seem to be one of the first companies in cycling to embrace web Bluetooth, which allows your Bluetooth device to speak directly to a website rather than just an app. So what this allows you to do, quite excitingly in fact, is link up your smart home trainer directly to a website like YouTube, so you can watch GCN training videos. How cool is that? That is very cool. Yeah. Head over to kinomap.tv for some more details. Yeah, that's quite exciting, mm. isn't it? Finally, for Tech of the Week, we'll keep it short this week because we've been talking an awful lot about triathlon bikes, but Felt's revolutionary left-hand drive side bike, the mm. one that supposedly saved a whole handful of watts on a velodrome by hiding the drivetrain in the dirty air on the left-hand side of the bike. Dirty air. Dirty air caused by perpetually turning left on a velodrome. Well, that bike is now available to buy for the princely sum Wait for it. $25,999 only. Oh, that's remarkable, isn't it? What a price tag. I don't know where they plucked that one from, but yeah. I have two. Really? Mm. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We'll start this week's cycling shorts with what appears to be a new celebrity segment. Now again this week, cyclists are getting a little bit of a bad rap, but this time it's far more serious than Arnie riding through a German station. Indeed it is. Kim Kardashian West, famous for being Kim Kardashian West, was actually robbed at gunpoint, losing six million euros worth of jewellery. And then, bizarrely, unbelievably almost, the five thieves then escaped by bicycle. That is... A, I know, Paris's yeah. public high bikes, the Velib ski. That's nuts, isn't it? Well, it's also a bit of a surreal twist, a rather grim story. I mean, city bikes are fun, aren't they? There's no doubt about that, but they're not overly quick. No, yeah, that's quite a getaway. Mm. Anyway, moving on to something a little bit different, but also not particularly nice for the people involved. Uh, Singapore, okay, now the two organizers of the unofficial Holy Crit fixed wheel criteria in Singapore were jailed for seven days the other day Whoa. and also fined $5,000 each for not getting the correct permissions to run the race. Now I think that's a little bit harsh in relation yeah. to the jail sentences but of course there do need to be kind of laws and, and legislation around that sort of thing just to protect people. Jeremy! Not again! That was his friend's bike, you know? I know! Second bike. Right. Moving on, this story has been around for a while, but it's a good one, so here it is. If you want to safely send your bike through the post, just pretend it's a flat screen TV. 
Yep, that bit of insight comes from Van Moof, who are a Dutch e-commerce bike brand. Fed up with having bikes damaged in transit, they struck upon the idea of printing bike boxes with images of flat screen TVs on. And lo and behold, the rate of damage decreased by 70 to 80 percent. Can you believe that? That's amazing. Mm. Simple, but at the same time, genius. Yep. And on another subject altogether now, remember those um, inflatable bicycle helmets? I do, yeah. The ones that work like car airbags? Well, Stanford University over in America have been doing some research and they claim that they actually offer a lot of protection, actually reduced concussion. Now, there is a slight caveat and that the, the helmet and the device has to be fully inflated before it will offer that level of protection. But, because there has been a few problems in relation to getting fully inflated, but it does beg the question that there's some definite merit in the system after all. There is, perhaps, but does it look as cool as this? That really does look, I, look that looks so cool. It I does. really hope they go into production. But it does remind me of Lloydie's hair, circa 2009. Ice cool. Oh yeah. I'm staying with the subject of safety. We've had a fantastic response in the comments section following our, our news report in last week's show in relation to drivers being prosecuted for driving too near to cyclists. Now, Richard Simpson has replied um, in Australia to say that the, pr the police are actively prosecuting people who get closer than a metre. The same's happening in Ontario and Canada, according to G. McGillibray. And John Moore has also got in touch to tell us that Cambridge police in the UK are looking to follow West Midlands Police's example, which is absolutely fantastic. That's very cool too. Very great news all around, in fact, yeah. actually. Yeah. Right, changing tack completely to transfer news. Oof. And top US sprinter Corin Rivera is making a big move over to European World Tour team Liv Planter following finishing her studies this year. It should be a big step up for her. Mm. She's one super she's talent. Quick. And also, she's one to watch for the Worlds next Definitely. week as well. Definitely a bit of a dark Yeah, horse. and then other stuff. Matty Breschel is moving to Astana, whereas Esteban Chavez is staying put. He'll be with Orica Green Edge, in fact, through to the end of 2019. Mm. Now, long term, eh? that's, a, that's a good suit to have. Fantastic rider, Esteban. Team news of a different kind now. Now, Colnago, the iconic Italian bike brand, one of the most iconic brands in the world, in fact, are returning to the World Tour. That's good news. Now, they are going to be supplying bikes to the team, formerly known as Lampre Merida, and that's the TJ Sports product. And anybody who's new to the sport, I mean, it's worth explaining how iconic that brand is. I mean, a Peloton without Colnagos just isn't a pro Peloton, really. No, it's not. It's good to have them back. Remember Mapai? Oh. And Cerrone. And regular shaped frames. Merks. Diamond frames. Come on, go. Hmm. Hmm. It's time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week. I'm going to rename it Treat of the Week. <laughs> well, yeah, very apt, because this actually was on the Laser Helmet Twitter feed, and it is a gif of a Belgian cyclocross fan uh, saying, it's cyclocross season, who's excited? This man clearly got way too excited. Very excited, uh, man. <laughs> I think he's had one too many mineral waters, don't you? Yeah, a couple of shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> I've had at least eight mineral waters, mineral waters, mineral waters myself. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. First up, this is actually a request for a hack, and it's also a timely, timely reminder that you shouldn't try and fit tyres that are too big for your frame, shouldn't. as you'll see. Daniel Healy, poor lad, fitted 28 mil tyres in his Trek 5000. And as you'll see from that photo, he's worn through the carbon, which is, which is brutal. Anyway, Daniel is looking for a quick fix to try and save his carbon frame. He's suggesting bathroom sealant, which I would probably think is a bodge. Don't do that. That's an important bit of your bike you break, mate, <laughs> so just bear that in mind. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's fixable, but you've got to take it to someone that actually knows how to fix carbon and not just your local DIY superstore. Although it'd be super waterproof. Well, yeah, because at the minute he said it's got water sloshing around. Anyway, I feel your pain. That is really unfortunate. Mm, well, next up, this is a pretty cool. We've got a, a, a hack sent in uh, directly for Dan by Hugh Carthy. The British rider riding currently for the Caharral team, moving over to the World Tour next year for Cannondale Drapper. Pro hack. Yeah, so thanks very much for this year. Now he's cut himself some new threads on an old quick release lever. Um, and voila, perfect chain keeper. Look at that, that's really cool. Thanks, Hugh. It is another chain keeper though, Matt, let's face it. it. 
But yeah, that is, that is nicely executed, Hugh. Well, well done. I think Dan appreciated that. I'm sure Dan did. Right, okay, this one is a really interesting one from Landor, who said, under last week's season sheet, don't you hate it when you see something on hack forward slash bodge that you've done yourself, but then you can't send it in because people think you're copying? Well, check it out. He's made some bike jewellery. This time, he's actually chosen an Altegra chain as opposed to the one that was found in his local bike shop, which is what the lady from last week said actually her that's husband really, that's had That's really attractive. You'd have that as a key ring, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Good work. Very good work. Next up, this is spotted by Martin Martin Gurgle, uh, as local uh, bike shop in his university in the UAE, a folding full suspension road bike complete with Shimona, Shimona, rear cassette guard. <laughs> Sean Yates would be proud of this angle, I tell you. Look at that. I love a bit of Shimona kit, me. That is absolutely amazing. Look at the drops, that is. That's Maybe Yatesy did design that. That is just revolting in it's every vile. way, isn't it? It's got. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Should we just move on? Yeah. It does fold Swiftly though. That's one redeeming on. feature. You can fold up. You just chuck it away. Yeah, but. But oh god. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, next up, Ooh. something that looks at first glance quite Ooh. similar, but is actually really quite beautiful. Although with a really strange fork and stem. This one sent in by Louis Lemu, who we can never pronounce his name, but another Lemu. pro. Uh, what is this? this bike really caught my attention today? Could this be a GCN hack? Well, Lewis or Louis, that is a, that's a definite hack. It's 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 a bike of two halves for me. When you look from the left and sweep right, it's beautiful. Then it goes all a bit wrong at the front end to me. Uh, but and the yeah. red chain sets it off quite nicely. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the pro hack, Lou. Indeed. Now this. Whoa. Whoa. This is from Chico McCree, who's emailed it in. Um, stick for the rear brake. Take a look at that side. Pull the stick for the rear brake and the fabric for the front brake. Oh my word. It looks lo like, incredibly, it may work, but just look at the little finishing touches there, as well as a piece of wood or a <laughs> stick for the brake and a shoelace to actually lift the caliper up. He's actually got inner tubes as bar tape. Brilliant. But what's even more remarkable <laughs> is that genius. the bike, aside from that, doesn't look like a heap of rubbish. It look, that front wheel looks all right. I just think you need to spend a bob or two on that because that is a proper GCN bodge. That is something very, yeah. very special. Now, as you can tell, we love this segment <laughs> of the show. Like so it. please keep your hacks and bodges coming. <laughs> Submit them on virtually any form of social media with the hashtag GCN hack. More sticks, please. Right then. Uh, it's time. That's it. Yeah. For comment of the week. Mm -mm. Okay. Here we go. This is in relation to Bottlegate and was underneath the new show. That was a really nice intro. Thanks so much. I'm at uh, my best today. This is from Rodolphe Manessier who said, of course Dan Lloyd didn't do it. He's never doing anything. Good insight there from that. How does he know? A bit harsh, but yeah, it is remarkably true. Right. And then Michael McDermott uh, commented this. Honestly though, is it any wonder Bottlegate happened? I'm surprised an actual camera wasn't ordered. <laughs> so it I think that was left under our World Championships preview show and, and he did notice that there was a lot of wine glass uh, level changing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, I did get somebody to drink my wine for me, but you know. Of course, yeah. It, it, was, it was Dan, wasn't it? It was, it yeah. was. Well, uh, this is, this uh, comment here is from TCX Choi, and this is in relation to the Peter Sagan video where he uh, posted a very short video uh, while he's on a carousel at an airport. And TCX Choi says, are we just going to ignore Sagan's compression socks at the airport? Very good point. Yeah, we didn't. We did. Well, we didn't even ignore it. We didn't even notice it. We must. We, I did we're, see we're them. Slipping. I processed something, but I just kind of left it. I mean, I remember getting. You can get away with it. a lot, Peter Sagan, because he is quite cool and yeah. remarkably good. But that is a step too far. Compression socks at an airport, Peter. What are you thinking? I tell you, who can't get away with compression socks? Oleg Tinkoff. He was cruising around one of the uh, Tour de France really? hotels in full kit in compression socks for about an hour. Good riddance, just, just Oleg. Strutting round. Off you go on your bike. Compression socks, Oleg. Come on, bud. On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's how to get off your cyclocross bike with Sven Nace. Hmm. But really, it is going to be shown this week. I'm still looking forward okay. to that. We got confirmation it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. The first step you need to do is the right handling with your hand. You wait with your hand in the middle of the frame until here. So my hand is over here before I jump off the bike. I'm directly in the good position to carry my bike and take them over the barriers. Thursday is five ways to keep your bike safe. And on Friday, it's Ask GCN. Yeah, on Saturday, we've got Tom Merrison's Cyclocross Pro Bike, which is a bit of a beauty. On Sunday, I actually got to look around the Bell Helmet Test Lab, which Oof. is both 
terrifying and reassuring in equal measures. Well, what a crash test dummy, were you? No, not that time. Certainly impressive, though. That would be well worth a watch. And then on Monday, I'll show you how to set up tubeless cyclocross tyres, which, if you ride cyclocross, is a must-do. They're amazing. Mm. And on Tuesday... Hi, I'm Sven Nes, an old professional cyclist. I won a few races. Welcome to the GCN show. We're getting towards the end of the show now, so it can only mean one thing. Extreme Corner. And this week it is a really cool video that I actually saw on the Radivist website. And it is MASH SF, the super cool shop in San Francisco, introducing some of their riders. They're fixie riders. And it's pretty impressive and slightly bonkers. Check it out. Pretty serious skills in those tram lines. It is, yeah, not bad. I just kind of watch it that though, and just think that it might be more fun if they had free wheels. That's a good point. Maybe, well, if they're watching this, I mean, take heed. Perhaps. Yeah, try it. Try freewheeling. Oh, one thing, don't forget to get your votes in as soon as you can for the 2016 GCN Awards. You can do that in the description in the link below the video. Absolutely. And with that, unfortunately, we have to draw a close to the GCN show for this week. But don't worry, because there's so much more content here it's on GCN, is. including a video up there where we investigate wide tyres and wide rims, which is something of a hot topic at the moment, or click just down there for Unwritten Rules of Cycling Part 2, where I'm guessing you write them down. All should be revealed, but I'm in a dressing gown. Oh, and to subscribe to GCN, click on the globe. I'm in a dressing gown. Not <laughs> now, but in that video.